today's to uh, Red Dane top tip is on the first week of the calf's life. So, um, obviously, when it's, it's given birth in a nice clean area uh, it, with, a, with a mother that's not stressed, it's been taken away from there quietly, and then you need to decide what type of calf pen you're going to use. So, obviously, as Red Dane, we advocate the Mars pen, uh, and we find it works very well on many farms to take the calves straight into the Mars pens if you're having them in, in uh, a lot of calves at one time. You'd need sort of eight within a few days. Um, we've, uh, with, our pure, with our purebred calves, pure dairy calves, we're finding that we like to have them in smaller pens for about a week uh, prior to going into the group rearing in, in the Mars pens in, in groups of up to 10. So this is one option that we've developed. Um, we actually copied this from another farmer in, in, in the area. Um, we just developed it by putting some small wheels on the bottom uh, so it's easy to move. And uh, what we've also done is made sure that it's insulated. We use cardboard uh, or any kind of insulated material just to protect the calves against the, the heat of the afternoon. So you want to make sure that with your three sides, you're blocking the, the prevailing wind and you're blocking the afternoon sun. Those two things are very important. You don't want them stuck in there, baking the afternoon sun or having the prevailing wind blowing in there where they've got nowhere to hide. We also recommend insulating under the roof if you use metal roofing, um, just to stop some irradiated heat on a very hot day. We also think it helps to have a small gap here at the top, which just allows worst of the heat to get out on a, on a hot day but insulated right to the bottom so that when the calves are lying down on the floor they're actually not they're out of the wind. Um, we put in some bedding depending on your ground cover depend on how much bedding you need to put in and here because there's grass we haven't put a, a lot of bedding uh, also remembering that we move it every day so that the area never gets dirty or mucky and um, we think it's really important as well that you give the calves clean fresh water in a bucket from day one and we want to encourage them to eat a um, meal as soon as possible we also use the bait and feeder bottle um, which you will be able to see right at the back yeah uh, this gives the calves something to suck on and each time they they do suck on it they get a bit of meal in their mouth and we tend we see that it gets them eating meal a lot earlier than if you don't have one. So the, the most important thing in the calf's life and, and that's going to make the biggest difference is getting the right amount of the right quality colostrum in, into the calf. And um, you generally want to work to on 10 to 15 percent of the calf's body weight of good quality colostrum within the first six hours. We make sure that the first uh, in our case, it's about six liters of colostrum we need to get into the calves. And in our case, the first uh, three, uh, three liters, we make sure they get within an hour or two of birth, preferably half an hour of birth. The next three liters, we do within six hours. And we'd use the um, milk bar starter bottle to make sure that they, they get enough in. And we make sure that we're using the nice soft teats for that. Thereafter, from day two, generally, or day three, that have started learn to drink from the teat, we then change to the um, milk bar one or the milk bar easy lock, which we put just give us some milk. We then attach like that and measure the right amount of milk for the calf. We like to feed our calves twice a day. We think it's enough. And we also don't believe in feeding them too much, especially in the beginning. We find two and a half liters in the morning, two and a half liters in the afternoon is adequate. Um, and what we do then after each feeding is we actually move this pen along so that they're in a clean space, similar to how the Mars pen works. We think that this type of, of pen actually helps them transition to the Mars pen because they're used to moving. There is a little bit of social interaction there between the two cars and uh, they're used to being on the ground. Not and we also think that we have less of a buildup of disease here uh, rather than a deep litter system where every day they're on a clean, um, clean area. Um, obviously fly control is important around the calves and we advocate having a, um, a fly trap 
away from the pen, not in the pen, because you'll tend to draw the flies to them. Lastly, as you see, these calves have finished and they now, we, we leave the, the, the feeder in here until they've stopped sucking. We don't rip it out because then they'll tend to want to go and there is the chance of, of them cross suckling because they are close to each other. So let them um, finish suckling, make sure they've finished all the milk and they're relaxed, they're full. They then might go and, and, and uh, suck on the braiding feeder a bit or most likely just lie down and relax. Then we know that we fed them right and we've got our calf right really correct.